and welcome back to Reign of Terror News. I'm your host, Greg Gorshman. Today we'll be exploring a new method of killing, the guillotine. First, we send it over to our reporter, who's interviewing a convict, later to be executed. Hi, I'm not Peter Weller, and I'm in a French dungeon about to interview a prisoner that is later to be executed. What's your name? Louis. And why are you being executed? Because you're not loyal to the revolution. When are you being executed? Later in the night sometime. Have you tried pleading your case? No, but I tried to bribe the execution and sharpen the blade to make it quick. You bribed them? How much money? My life savings. Alright, well thanks for letting me interview you today. And have a wonderful night. Wow, that was something, wasn't it? And that, kids, is the importance of joining the French Revolution. And now I send it over to the executioner himself. Hi, I'm still not Peter Weller, and here with me now is the executioner. How did you get this job? I like business. Wonderful. Do you like this job? Do you regret doing this job? Do you sympathize for the people that you are executing? Yeah. All right, well, it was a wonderful interviewing you, and have a good night. You've got a long night ahead of you. <laughs> Man, he really enjoys his job. Wouldn't want to cross that guy. And you might be wondering why the guillotine was made in the first place, and who thought of it. We're about to answer those questions on scene with Joseph Guillotine himself, the guy who proposed the idea to the French government in the first place. Hi. Believe it or not, I'm still not Peter Weller. Here for you today is Mr. Joseph Guillotine. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I started as a literature professor at the University of Bordeaux. There, I studied medicine and eventually became a physician. All right, well, how'd you come up with this wonderful invention? Well, the ways for the death penalty were really inhumane at the time. So, at the, and the French government would hang criminals and behead them with swords. The swords would generally not kill the criminals very quick, and it was ve generally very painful. And it's a mess to clean up. So, do people seem to like this idea? Well, yeah, they would come and wash them in their afternoons and stuff, so... It's a wonderful pastime. Hey, get over here! Get over here! How many executions have you seen today? I've been seen a couple today, yeah. Just really a couple. Like five. Wow. It's only noon. Wow, five times in one day? That's a lot of beheadings. Can't imagine being in the executioner's place. But the guillotine itself is an incredible system, and to explain to you now is to be a Schmidt, the maker of the guillotine. Hi, I'm still not Peter Willard, and the guillotine didn't come into existence overnight. However, it had to be expertly thought out and thoroughly constructed for it to work properly. Here with me now is Mr. Tobias Schmidt, who took Mr. Guillotine's proposal and made it a reality. Hi, I'm Tobias Schmidt. With me today is one of my first model prototypes of the guillotine would work when the executioner cut this rope, causing the blade to fall down the victim's head and behead them. The guillotine blade generally weighed about eight pounds and was so they both be suspended at 13 feet in the air. The victim will be bound and shackled on their feet and hands, and their head will be placed in lunette to await their execution. A critical part of the guillotine would be the lunette. It would be able to hold the criminal's head in place, a very necessary piece, otherwise criminals would be able to escape. Imagine your final thoughts as you're being put into shackles, knowing it's the end. Ooh. Anyways, Back to the streets of Paris, where Louis is being led away to be executed. Hi, I'm still not Peter Weller. Hey, look, there he is! Here's Louis on his way to his execution. Any last words? Uh, I'm innocent! Do you have any last will and testament? Leave everything to my mother, yeah, my mother. Do you not have a wife and kids? Not anymore. Do you. No questions, time for the die. Wait, come back! Let's go watch this. Louis claimed to be innocent. <laughs> Not likely. This looks fun. Can't wait to see how this turns out. To the execution platform we go. 
Hi, now Peter Weller here, at the execution of Louis himself. I said have a good night, but, eh, it's not going very well. We are gathered here together to witness the execution of someone who will not be missed. Louis. He is sentenced to death for crimes against the revolution. He was considered not loyal. So, executioner, I order thee, cut the rope. Okay, then. That was, I guess, fun, I guess? Poor Lou, I hope he wasn't innocent. That would just make me feel terrible. Well, thanks for our report for going out there and taping all this information for us here at Rain and Terror News Headquarters. And thanks for our viewers for tuning in to Rain and Terror News. Your, don your donations are greatly appreciated. Don't forget to come back for the tomorrow for the Napoleonic Wars. Th this is your host, Fred Gorshman, saying, Bon Yuli, and good night. Hi, I'm Jimmy Gorshman, and today I'll be looking at the aftermath of the French Revolution and the Reign of Terror. During the Reign of Terror, at least 300,000 suspects were arrested for being disloyal to the revolution. Of that 300,000, some 17,000 were public publicly executed and about 10,000 died in prison without a trial. Many of the executioners were part of the same family, the Sansons, and the job was passed down as a family business. The official guillotine used by the state of Luxembourg from 1789 to 1821 is currently in the Museum of History in the city of Luxembourg. That's all for today, folks. Tune in, for, tune in to the station tomorrow, same time, to look at Napoleon and his European conquest. Thank you, and good night.